Um, and Whitley Bay is, uh, was chosen a, as one of 150 big local areas. Um, and we all got given a million pounds. And really, with quite a wide remit, that actually to spend that money over a 10 year period and to spend it on the community according to what the community's needs were and wants were. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about our story. Um, but I just wanted to start off with just two things that I saw in the news um, that really sort of resonated with me and, and, and about a bit of a picture of what's going on in Whitley Bay and why big locals were chosen in the first place. Um, so one on BBC North East last night, they had a story about um, Outwood Academy, which is a school that's situated in a big local area called North Holmes Bay. And, and, and it was talking about the impact of COVID on that particular school. So 40 pupils had had a relative that had actually died in that local area. And in a two mile radius of that school, 70 people had died within a two mile radius. And I think it sort of um, demonstrated that there's a long way to go on levelling up, really. And, and that was one of the reasons why big locals were given that funding, was to allow communities to um, create their own answer to how you level up. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And then the other thing that kind of resonated with me was um, Marcus Raj Rashford um, and his story about how food, how food poverty affected him as a child and how that's an ongoing issue. And, and you know, fortunately, the government um, really took that on board and it, it committed to um, providing £120 million pounds worth of funding um, for summer, uh, summer school meals. Um, but those things are kind of connected to the story. I'm going to tell a little bit about what's happened with Whitley Bay. So for Whitley Bay, um, we are a coastal town in the northeast, and um, like a lot of coastal towns, went into decline sort of the late 1990s. And really, it's only the last two years that we've seen some recovery. Um, actually, if we could get the first slide up, that would be okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this just gives you a really nice overview of all the things that Whitley Bay and Big Local has been doing over the last five years. I'm not going to go into loads of them. Um, but Whitley Bay sometimes gets described as a bit of a donut of affluence. So the outskirts of um, Whitley Bay are really quite um, wealthy. Um, but where the big local area resides is that sort of interesting jammy bit in the middle where loads of interesting people live, but also where there's quite a lot of poverty, uh, where there's co poor quality private rented, where there's a transient population living in B&Bs. Um, and there's also the hidden issue of like loneliness. So although there might be sort of some more affluent older people living in the area, they're quite lonely. Um, so our plan's been multi-layered. Um, one, to provide a universal offer, something that um, to bring everyone together. And we've used art as a vehicle to do this. Um, and that's included having an annual carnival, um, we've got a creative civic changing programme um, and environmental improvements to the town. Um, but then also targeted work such as combating loneliness am amongst older people um, and um, a, a Sunday lunches group, a young carers group. So um, the two main things that were happening just as lockdown started for us were uh, we were in the lead up to Carnival. So we brought back a, a community Carnival about six years ago. And we would, as part of our Creative Civic Change programme, we were hosting um, loads of preparatory events for the carnival. And the second thing that happened was we were trying to purchase the building that we currently rent, which is a hub of lots of our community activities. And then lockdown happened, <laughs> kind of up here to a lot of that stuff. As so we move on to the next slide. So, um, like I say, we're about to do we're about to do a big carnival. You know, ten thousand visitors attending the town for a weekend, massively renowned national event it is now. Um, and obviously, that carnival couldn't go ahead. So instead, um, we went online um, and we decided to deliver this in a totally different way. So artists would normally be working in schools um, and instead they made instructional videos for costume, dancing, singing in cushions. Um, so families were actually invited to make their own costumes for the day. Um, so loads of families got involved. We had a socially distanced disco truck 
uh, traveling the streets of Whitley Bay for the day. Um, and we had a series of online events that went on for about five hours that have been watched by thousands of people. And obviously in the, in the middle of lockdown at the point where we couldn't really go out, that made a big difference to people feeling part, still part of their community. Um, and as it happened, the winds were so strong on that day that had lockdown not been happening, the carnival itself would have been cancelled otherwise. So as it happened, the online event turned out to be a bit of a blessing in disguise. Um, so the second thing, next slide please. Um, the next thing that we were concentrating on um, was, um, oh, I think you've got an old version of the events, but next, the next thing that we were looking at was uh, purchasing the community building. Um, and um, just as we were about to purchase it, we were literally getting the valuation. We had the funding in place. We were getting the valuation done just as COVID was locking down. Um, and unfortunately, that's aligned itself with the market for commercial space plummeting the value, um, resulting in a significant drop in valuation for the building. So that's meant that we've not been able to purchase this building at that time. Um, so instead we've renegotiated a two year lease with a rent free period built in to recognise that we're still in lockdown at this point in time. Um, plus um, subleasing clauses so that'll, that'll still allow us to implement our business plan in future to get us to the point of self sustainability over the next couple of years. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit later about what COVID's meant for our aspirations for the community building a little bit later. So the next thing that happened was um, very early in the lockdown, we recognised that there was going to be an issue lo looming with lonely, isolated people and those living transiently in B&B accommodation. So we had uh, an initial conversation with the local authority, but whilst they were offering services to the shielding group, um, the, the groups we were concerned about would not be served by this offer. So in partnership with the round table um, and a local restaurant and a volunteer chef, um, we were able to find some match funding. And um, Whitley Bay Big Local really did the job of identifying who those vulnerable people were because we already had existing trusted relationships with those local people. Um, and we've provided over 2,000 meals during this lockdown period for some really, really vulnerable people that didn't even have access to kitchen facilities. At best, they had a microwave um, and little money to purchase food um, via takeaway anyway. Um, so that's uh, made a big difference. We've also partnered with Bernardo's um, and we're looking at a, at a project going forward um, to sort of try and um, sort of bring on some of the young people that have been really isolated during this period. Um, so we think that that's been a, an incredibly uh, positive activity that we've done through Big Batch Cooking. Next slide, please. We've also, um, we had a, a number of groups that were already running, um, which were mostly older people's groups. Um, so we had a knit and natter group, we had sewing classes already running. Um, and obviously they couldn't meet face to face anymore. But during this period, we've been able to, um, they've been able to operate remotely and we've been able to provide a response in, in partnership with North Tyneside Business Forum and a couple of local businesses um, and working in conjunction in partnership with those organisations, we've um, produced over 12,000 bags for the NHS. Um, and that's been a real, you know, like you say, people coming out and making the best of that situation. And I think this is a really fantastic example that people thought I really wanted to contribute something and this was a way that they could actually achieve that. Um, so next slide, please. So we maintained a lot of the pre-lockdown activities, but did it in a new way. So we re retained our regular sessions on Thursday, Friday mornings, but used technology. And we're actually able to get a 94-year-old gentleman on Zoom for the very first time um, by coaching him through that. So he was able to still um, meet with those groups. Uh, the Net and Nata Net groups, we were able to deliver those online. Um, and um, for those who were online, we, we kept in touch with our, um, our service users on a regular basis over the phone. Um, and we set up a number of different WhatsApp groups. And again, it's sort of making the most of 
our technology opportunities to keep in touch with people. So what have we learned through this uh, period? We've learned, as Marcus Rashford uh, uh, lit a spotlight on it, food poverty was there before and it will continue to be an issue as we go out of COVID. Uh, we've applied for uh, funding through the RAP Fund and we're waiting to see if this will be successful in bringing about a members-based food pantry, which is a positive move and allows people to get past food bank usage, which, you know, the feedback that we get from community users who, uh, community service users who have to use food banks is, although that there are um, something that they feel is necessary and part of the community, at the same time, they don't want to be using them long term. You know, there's a sense of shame in having to go to a food bank. Um, we'll continue to serve and build on activities that serve the marginalised. So we want to build on our Happy to Chat um, and something for Sunday, our Sunday lunches. But now we've realised that we can do, deliver some of this in a multimedia way and face-to-face -face is not the only show in town. Um, so we've put a joint bid in with Bernardo's to ensure the, the needs of our more young people will be served. And it's made us reconsider our business plan for the building. So prior to lockdown, we were going to rent out the top floor of our building for commercial use. And whilst that's still in the mix, we now want our top floor to be a focus for therapeutic activities. And we'll be trying to attract commercial ventures that also have a social purpose to deliver this. And we feel that that better aligns with our vision to build a resilient community. So uh, that's my bit done. Thank you.